Hello and welcome. This is Social Studies, Voices Across America. I'm Bill Wood. And I'm Peter Goldsmith. Today, a simple question that will reveal so much. Who will benefit from this? Peter, the answer to that question will always lead us down the right road in a political issue, right? Absolutely right, Bill. And you know, it always used to be follow the money. That's what people would say, follow the money. Yep. But in this case, it's a little bit different. Follow the power. Who has the power? How are they unwilling to give it up? And what will they do to keep it? So you see that the things which we look around us, we have to begin to think, who will benefit by this? And when we get to the bottom of that, perhaps real facts emerge. You know, I spent I spent my entire broadcasting career in some form or another as a journalist. And I forget that you had some of that background, too, that you actually ran a newsroom. So you know how to apply that issue. If you want to find out what's behind something, you automatically ask that question mentally, uh, who benefits from this? That's the first thing that you have to ask yourself, because now... I think it'd be very safe to say that our country at this point is in a state of chaos. And I think there is so much going on that people don't understand. I mean, the pandemic, which is taking thousands and thousands of lives, has already taken over 120,000 American lives. Half the people, or, or portion, I hope it's not half, think, no, it's a hoax. You don't need to wear a mask. You don't need to follow these things. Well, you know what? A pandemic is not a political issue. A pandemic is a scientific and medical issue. Should so be, who, at least, yeah. It should be, right. Who does this benefit? Who out there wants to say it's a hoax? We know somebody who said it, and he was proven dead wrong, wasn't he? Who is benefiting? And that's the way we have to approach these things, because they are extremely entangled and confusing. Let's take a second, because speaking of entangled and confusing, the pandemic should be the number one issue. People are dying at the rate of one every 15 minutes in America. But something that staggered both of us, just as we were getting ready to start this, is a pro football player, an African-American pro football player, uh, posts on social media uh, things that are uh, denigrating to uh, Jews, praising uh, Adolf Hitler. It was staggering to read these comments, and it's like food for the Oval Office. There's no justification for it, but how do you find a place for this? Well, here's what I I think we have to go back a little further. Yeah, I read that, uh, and it was appalling to me. Obviously, I'm Jewish, so it was painful and appalling. But here's what I think you have to do with, with stuff like that. You need to go way back and say, Who brought us the concept of, quote unquote, fake news? Because what fake news means is, if I don't agree with the facts, then it's fake. If I feel that what I say is correct, then that's the real news for me. And what you're giving me is fake news. Now, let's go back to our newsroom days, okay? When a reporter came in the newsroom way back in the dark ages, when you and I were still in there, you had to have at least two and most of the time three sources to justify what you were going to take on the air. You just couldn't say, and I I worked other places too. I worked with a guy named Morton Downey, who was, I call it the good, the bad, and the ugly in my career. We'll (laughs) leave it alone where Morton sat on that. Morton came in one day and he said, you know, I was in a bar last night having a steak dinner and drinking, and a guy at the bar told me this. And so I'm going to go on the air with it. And I said, Morton, you can't go on the air with that. It was a very uh, poignant comment about a current politician at the time. Okay? And, and he promised that he wouldn't go on the air with it because I asked him not to and so forth. Of course, as soon as we got in the air, he went on the air with it. <laughs> exactly. But, but we weren't a news organization. So it could be okay to have fake news for that because that's funny. It doesn't matter. You know, if you go on a talk show and some clown says yada, yada, it doesn't matter. He's not new. But we're in a situation now where, where these things do matter. They have to be factual. You know, we do have climate change. The earth is warming up. There is a pandemic that's killing healthy people. Those are facts. 
you know, and unless you can dispute them scientifically, which none of these people can, shut up. And let's get the politics out of our lives all the time. Now, with this particular case, I think this guy, number one, is ignorant and perhaps even harbor some of those feelings. He may, who knows? And I think he just thought, well, I want to get on the front page or I want the headlines. And this is something that I think is true. And someone told me this and here he is writing it out. Or in this day and age, someone, I don't put it past them. And maybe this is part of my cynicism that I don't want revealed, but it's not impossible that somebody paid him to put that out there, to take some of the heat away from the pandemic and to feed. You talk about who benefits from this. The president benefits from it because it's it's uh, it feeds in to his separatist philosophy of culture and society, them and us. And he thinks, look at him, he thinks like us. So that's the way. Right. He's a black man and he yeah. still thinks like us. Yes, so all yes. black people are not bad. Yeah, right. You, right. You know, right. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. And it gives him two or three days of headlines. So I wouldn't put it past uh, anybody in that campaign to, uh, or that su- financially supports that campaign to, you know, write a million dollar check and say, hey, take the take this heat for a couple of days. It'll be gone in a week and uh, nobody will remember what you said. And it gives the president a few talking points for a few days. And, you know, everybody's fine with it. And it keeps rolling uh, in his reelection efforts. And also, I think part of the entanglement here is the holy sacrosanct Internet, which can put up any babble that they want. And especially with Twitter and all these other social media uh, tools, people can say whatever they say, and that's wonderful. It's fully democratic. I mean, with a small d, not the party. And it's okay. However, we need to figure out how much of this is malarkey and how much of this has any semblance to anything that's real. And I think we're going through a situation now where people who are trying to attain power, we'll talk about power a little bit more, you and I have spoken about it, will do anything they can to do it, right, wrong, or indifferent. I don't know. He's a professional football player, and he's probably got at least 100,000 followers on these things. So you know 100,000 people are now going to listen or read what you said. So there's your desire to have that power, to be on top of the heap. Oh, I'm number one on whatever it happens to be. The Facebook, I don't know these things. You know I don't. Yeah. The Facebook, the Instagram, whatever it happens to be. This goes on all the time and it goes on unchecked because there are, as we were saying in the newsroom, no checks and balances here. That's the biggest damage that's been done to the culture in the past 10 years, especially in the past four, is the damage to the news media. There was a time when we believed what we read because of what you said. It was factual and it Mm -hmm. was based on somebody's searching out the truth of the matter. And now uh, anything that's written on social media, it gets a uh, some energy and takes off and people will report that and it's got no basis in fact and it becomes mm-hmm. truth because it's been reported over and over and over again uh, and it's going to take one or two generations for that to return if it ever does uh, we you know if if we can't believe in what we are told then we'll only believe what we're told to believe And that's the beginning of the end of the American experience, uh, the American experiment. And, you know, I say over and over again, there's no there's no guarantee that this has to work. And it hasn't even been 250 years of this experiment of trial of a multicultural society uh, in a democratic with a small d base. And uh, it's not guaranteed to work. It, when you compare cultures in Asia, in Europe that have been around for thousands of years, you know, there's no guarantee that Americanism has to work, especially if democracy becomes mob rule on either side of uh, the issue, whether it's the liberal side or the conservative side. If the mob the one with the biggest voice is going to write history and make the rules, 
then, you know, we're in trouble, deep trouble. Well, history has always been written by the ruling class. Yeah. Whether you agree with that or you don't agree with it, that's another fact. That, but that's uh, true. That's true. Yeah. 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 And, and so what we have here now is we have a way of pushing someone down and building someone up. We don't have the neutrality. You know, when I was a young kid, everybody got their news from the newspaper. And then later on, everybody got their news from the radio. And then people got their news from television. And from Walter right? Cronkite. Remember, Walter he was Cronkite, the most yeah. he was the most respected most person trusted, in the society. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was actually the speaker at my graduation. Ah. Walter Cronkite was. Wow. But, but anyway, college graduation. Anyway, the, the point now is all that news, and, and I'm not saying it was neutral, it certainly wasn't neutral. It was always slanted. And it was slanted toward who was paying the bills as everything is slanted in Los Angeles, yeah. which is even more amazing about this football player, this jackass, because the guy that owns his team is Jewish. So do you want to now be putting anti-Semitic remarks out and the guy's about to sign your check and look twice at your check? I know <laughs> he's coming. He may, he, not, he may he not ever he, sign another check. He may not ever sign. Yeah, this guy may wind up playing for, uh, you know, the high school team over here where I live. <laughs> but, uh, but, the, but the point is, you know, th there's, a th there's, there's a way of checking and doing things correctly, and there's a way of doing things just for your own means and goals. And I think that's what's occurred in this country. I think people now are pushing so far to their side without any respect, consideration for fact, for knowledge, or for other people's uh, feelings and, and their knowledge. You know, it's the oldest statement in the world. Your mother told you, you got two ears and one mouth. Listen twice as much as you talk. Yeah. There's no listening. We don't listen to each other. Your anymore. mom told you that too? That came oh. from my mom, you know. Oh, yeah. I thought my mom was original with that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, truthfully, yeah. you can't you can't have a discussion and differ. You and I grew up in the 60s, and, and those were times when things were very different and exploding, and we could always discuss things with people. You can't do that anymore. There's no disagreeing on things. Everything now is black and white. Nobody wants to enter into a gray zone. Nobody wants to listen to another idea. We need to open up our minds to think for ourselves instead of being sheep. And that's, a, that's an expression this woman the other night happened to use. I'm not a sheep. I don't need to wear a mask. Only people who are not healthy get this thing. Like, well, guess what? I read the other day. I don't know what the number is. I think it's over 30. All these professional athletes in the NFL and the Major League Baseball, I'm not sure it was NBA, probably NBA too, over 30 have gotten this thing. Oh, it's well over 30. I think there were 13 members of the Dallas soccer team. That, I heard that yesterday, yeah. right, that they closed down their team. My point is, these are men, we're talking about men specifically right now, who are in the prime of their life, who are healthy as they can be, for crying out loud, all they do is train and eat and go to scientific this and the other thing, other thing, but because it's a political issue, because the president doesn't want to wear a mask, uh, or he doesn't do it, I don't have to do it, he's the right guy, blah, blah, blah. well, you know, that, that's just pure ignorance. Yeah. It's pure ignorance. And let's, let's look at some more headlines here. I think much of the crime spree in the country's major cities is coming from two sources because they're the only two who benefit from this violence. First, the police benefit because they are pouting about after the citizen scrutiny of late after the uh, George Floyd murder. But the president also benefits because he's running on a law and order platform. Right. The more he can crack down on lawbreakers, the more order we'll have in the societies. Just remember the ultimate end of law and order is fascism in my mind. What do you think of that? Do you think that, again, taking this question of who benefits, uh, it doesn't make sense that all of this suddenly, this upheaval and violence, you know, these are the only two people who benefit. So either the cops aren't doing their job uh, or the president uh, and his supporters are triggering it so that, uh, you know, he can benefit uh, also as well as the cops. What do you think? Yeah, I, I, I think you make a very good point there. Uh, I, I think, you know, who else benefits from this is the people who are unwilling to listen and behave. And what I mean by that, we have a thing, Black Lives Matter. I don't think there's anybody in America who hasn't heard 
that that name, Black Lives Matter. Okay. I have another friend who lives here, who's a, who is a journalist and television journalist, and he said that when he when they do a report on Black Lives Matter, half of their emails and texts are White Lives Matter too. Yes, of course they do. Everyone's life matters. Of course it does. But we're talking about an issue here that people have to give up. They're not shooting white people in the back as they run away. They are for black people. They're not throwing white people on the ground and putting their knee on their neck and murdering them in front of television cameras, or I don't know if television cameras doubt it, but of the cell phone cameras. You know, they're not doing that. So we have to stop and get out of our own little shell and go, yeah, wait a minute. I'm a white guy, obviously, but black lives matter. I need to listen to what's going on. And, you know, that is the first thing the government doesn't want to have happen. Dr. King, who I've said on these these podcasts many times, in my opinion, the greatest American that we've ever had, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., he was fine as long as he was messing around with all those black people. No problem. Let him do what he wants to do. Once he created the Poor People's March, once he said, we're all in this together, brothers and sisters. And the reason he was in Memphis was to support garbage sanitation, workers. And sanitation their, worker and their, strike. And their strike. It had, had nothing to do with black people marching for voters' rights or civil rights. No, uh, no. You know, and, but that was too much. Yeah. That was too much. Yep. Yeah. And we have a history of doing this. We have a history of doing this. Even, uh, I'll spread a little bit afar, but it's an interesting thing too. Marijuana in the 1920s was legal. It was used primarily by artists and musicians, many of whom were people of color. Oh, we don't care. Let those people do what they want to do. We don't, blah, blah, blah. Okay, in the 1960s, When middle-class white boys, myself included, wait a minute, we have a drug epidemic, whatever they call it. You know what I mean? Well, wait a minute. This has been for, no, no, no. We have have white boys and girls from from the suburbs. They have cars. They live in private homes. This has always been what goes on because the power, when I discuss racism and you said racism is a secondary elaboration to power, this is about power. This is about who controls the strings of power. The media, everybody, oh, the media, the media, the media. Guess what? The media doesn't control anything. The media reports on what's going on. Now, they are biased, and half the time they're full of malarkey, and there's no question about that. And you and I are both members of the media or grew up in our whole lives being members of the media. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a ton of that stuff that's a bunch of bunk, to quote my sainted yeah. mother. Well, well, it's imp- it's impossible for yeah. a thinking adult to not have values. And uh, when you look at on the media, when you look at a day when there's a hundred stories to re- that are valuable, right, right, you have a value that you place on this twenty that we're going to tell people. And you know, when you have uh, a value where you make three or four times the national average in income. You live in low density neighborhoods. You are probably not married. Uh, You're probably white. Uh, So you have a value that might be different from the overall community. You can't be a thinking adult without having some opinions. You could be fair, but you can't be a thinking adult without having some opinions on the way life turns. I mean, we have to prioritize our lives, especially in this this era right now where everything happens in a second, everything, okay? So we prioritize our lives. And one of the things that we prioritize as the news, as the news goes on is, number one, what's our lead story? How long is it going to be? Why is it the lead story? And again, Bill, who does it benefit? Yeah, 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 you know, it, yeah. And if you pick the right lead story, it benefits your network, your paycheck, <laughs> and you. But the argument that, that I find more compelling than that is, and I hope this begins to happen now because of all the chaos we're in, we need to begin to understand and respect disparate voices. We don't do that in this country. You know, we, uh, we want to hear 
the, the voice of the white person in power. And that doesn't work anymore. That needs to stop. We need to be inclusive and, as opposed to exclusive. And I think that's what we're getting with conservative issues. I think conservatism is more about exclusivity. And I think the reason that we have to really pay attention to that is we're not going to move forward without inclusion. People of color, people of different gender, people of, of, of a gender they're not sure of yet, uh, people who are otherly abled. I don't like the word disabled. Yeah, otherly yeah, abled. Yeah. You know, that needs to fill into what we do. Those people have uh, knowledge and uh, the right to bring to the table what they've been held back from. And I think that's a lot of this anger. We talk about protesters, and I think a lot of that anger is, I don't care if I mark up your walls or steal your television set. You've marked up my whole life and stolen half my life by keeping me down. Not saying I agree with that. I don't. But I can understand it, even though I'm not part of it. I can understand it. Now, we're moving along here. So I want to, uh, I want to, there's a couple of issues that I want to bring up in this issue of uh, who benefits. We're hearing from the president, who's made for uh, more than a month now, who's made a big argument against mail-in ballots, even though he votes mail-in. Uh, and I was amazed to hear that one of his attorneys or advisors found a difference between a mail-in ballot and an absentee ballot that gets mailed in, but that's part of that world. So the president wants us to believe there'll be fraud, but there's been no fraud problems with mail-in voting in the past and some states, including states where mail-in is all they do is vote mail-in. That's Colorado, Hawaii, Oregon, Utah, and Washington. They do all their voting by mail. So remember who benefits. The president's re-election could depend on voter suppression through things like discouragement and staying home. The voter fraud is is rare unless he plans on enlisting foreign intervention as he did in 2016. Again, we have to recognize who benefits from some of these issues that are brought up in the news media, but you have to weigh how you think and how you draw a decision based on who benefits and what reality, to, to in air quotes, what reality is. And I think we're heading into an election now where, to quote the old uh, Carnival Barker, you ain't seen nothing yet. Because I think this is going to be down and dirty and people need to get rid of all the chaos, get rid of all the clutter, understand who you are and what you want the country to be and vote. Okay. Yep. Get out there and vote and make sure your friends vote and your kids, you know, I have plenty of friends. Well, my kid is 22. He doesn't really want to vote. He thinks it's not, no, 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 no. That's in the old days. Th this is, this is a vote for the soul of this country. We need to recapture this country and make it again, a viable country that is not prone to politicizing for their own goals and own needs, everything which comes up. Yeah, there's a, I want to bring up too, before we, before we get out of here, there was a, a three-year-old article in Forbes magazine that I stumbled onto the other day, and it outlines how the people who stayed home in three key states in 2016 decided the presidential election. This was the case in Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and especially in Michigan. Because in Michigan, the president was elected with only 10,000 more votes than Mitt Romney, who lost Michigan in 2012. But 100,000 people who voted in 2012 12 stayed home in 2016. They'd probably argue that Hillary Clinton wasn't worth their vote, but you can see how that uh, elected a racist demagogue to the Oval Office. We can't afford that argument of the lesser of two evils this time around. And like you were just saying, we especially can't afford to stay home in protest because we don't like the president or we don't like the presumptive Democratic nominee, Joe Biden. Returning this administration to power will change Americanism forever. And that means uh, make plans to start voting now uh, for November 3rd. You cannot 
you cannot stay home under any circumstance, whether you get up and go to a poll or you vote absentee or you mail in your ballot. You cannot not participate in this election. Bill, you must learn what's going on. Yep. If you go to your local board of elections, they will be happy to give you who's running, what their background is, and the issues involved. Uh, yeah, even if you don't have web access to find this stuff out. Oh, you can find it on the web, but you can go down there yeah, and, yeah. and it's free and, uh, and you, they'll give it to you. That was what I valued in California that you didn't have here in Ohio, that they sent you a ballot package, that a little booklet that had all the issues, what they yeah. stood for, what a yes vote means, what a no vote means. It was all there in one place. And if you had some question, you could find it in that booklet. If you do anything with stimulus checks, you should make that a federal law for all voters everywhere. You don't have the luxury here of the lesser of the two evils. That, that's not there anymore. Yeah. Uh, I know we're close, Bill. So I, I think the only thing I want to just put in at the end is you need to pay attention. You need to learn about things and you need to make sure that you and anyone else that you have in your circle, vote. Yeah. That's the key issue here. Let's rewrite the path that we're on. Let, let's bring it back to normalcy. That's all. Just Whatever normal. normal's going to be, right, let's right. Whatever, re- yank normal, it back right. from where it's you know, what people want the new normal to be. Right, right. Uh, and right. like we have been saying for the last half hour, uh, really ask the question, who benefits? When you get late headlines, if, if, election, if the voting is going to happen on November 3rd, I guarantee to you on November 2nd or November 1st, there's going to be some wild accusation that's going to show up in the headlines. Uh, and instead of flying off the handle, who benefits from this? Right. Ask that question. Who benefits from this? And if you studied, you know the issues, you know the personalities, you're not staying home, and you can vote for whoever you want to. If you want to vote for Donald Trump, vote for him. But have that vote based on some reality, not on uh, you know something that all of my friends are going to vote for him. Uh, you know he's a nice guy. He seems like a guy I want to have a beer with. You know, vote on something that has some basis in reality. Uh, don't get caught up in George Soros, the billionaire who gives money to liberal causes because there's a conservative billionaire uh, named Charles Koch who pours money into conservative issues. So uh, there's you know there's rich people on both sides. Listen to the arguments, ask who benefits. And, uh, you know, we're going to talk about this some more, Peter. I think this is really, really, really important. This is the first of several that yep. we'll do. Yep. Please, if you, if, you, if you listen to this podcast on our website, agnetislife.com, and you got something to say to us, please do, and we'll, we'll bring it on the next podcast. We've done that before. We'll continue to do that. If we get emails and questions or comments, more than happy to do it anonymously or with a name, whatever. But tell us what you're feeling and what you're thinking, because we're all moving through this together. Whether you play wide receiver for the Philadelphia Eagles <laughs> and, and have lost your mind, <laughs> maybe too many hits have taken you down the wrong way. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe this is, that's the beginning of CTE in that man's head. But what, you know, whatever you, whatever you're thinking, you're allowed to think it. That's what the First Amendment guaranteed. And if you, you don't want anybody, whoever's in the Oval Office, you don't want to have someone take that right away from you. So whatever you're thinking, have that thought based on some reality other than uh, I heard it through the grapevine. <laughs> that right. just popped into my head. <laughs> right, right. I heard it through the grapevine. Wow. Peter, until we see each other again, take care of each other and respect each other. Absolutely. Peace. You can get this podcast. You can tell someone else about this podcast. It's available through YouTube, through iTunes, and through Google Play. Let's hear from you. Let us know what you think so that we can be in community with you. 
And there is a way to contact us. That's at peter at agnetislife.com or bill at agnetislife.com. That's our email addresses. Let's hear from you. Let's open up the forum. Thank you.